Hi, my name is Robert. Please read the comments in the About section of this video. It has valuable information and updates. My YouTube channel has a disclaimer video that I encourage you to watch. And please, like, share, and subscribe. I hope you find what you're looking for. Thank you very much for watching. In this video, I'm going to talk about the turbochargers wastegate actuator. I covered it a little bit in the overview turbo video, but this one will show you and explain to you a little bit more about the wastegate, what can go wrong with it, how you can check it, and what you need to do if you suspect that you have a problem wastegate actuator. A wastegate actuator's job and actuate and open the wastegate to let some of the exhaust gases bypass the turbine ex uh, exhaust side of the turbo so that the turbo doesn't spin as fast and build up the pressure or too much pressure. Common symptoms of a wastegate actuator gone bad. Basically, the function of the wastegate actuator is to open up the wastegate and let air bleed off of the turbo so the turbo doesn't produce too much pressure. So your basic malfunction would be if the diaphragm inside this actuator fails to work and air suctions or pressurizes this to open the actuator to bleed off the pressure from that, if that diaphragm is torn, that will never allow that rod to come out. And if that rod doesn't come out, it won't open up that wastegate. If that wastegate won't open up, it will allow the turbocharger to produce too much pressure and cause turbo boost spikes, which can be damaging to the motor. So your most common symptom that you have a problem with your wastegate actuator is one day you wake up and all of the sudden your car has a lot more power than it usually has. This makes it critical that you have some kind of boost gauge on your turbo system. For the life of me, I have no idea why car manufacturers would take the turbo boost pressure gauge out of the instrument cluster because without one, you really have no idea how much pressure your turbo system is supposed to put out and how much it is actually putting out. Here in my car, I have a turbo boost gauge. As you can see, when the car is static, the turbo boost gauge is sitting static. When I start the car, it'll create a vacuum in the turbo system and that gauge should fall to the negative side. When I'm putting a demand on the turbo, passing someone, picking up speed, climbing mountains, that turbo will begin to pressurize the intake system and that needle will go into the white area. That's letting me know that I'm putting a demand on my turbocharger. Now, let's say for an example, when I'm at Watt, wide open throttle, and I'm putting a demand on the turbo, as big as the demand is designed, that that needle actually climbs to the left. And for some reason, okay, you see the little shadow there? That little shadow in the white area indicates how high my needle should climb at a peak. If all of a sudden that needle starts going past that peak, I know that my car is overboosting and that I have a problem with my system that I need to get fixed before I damage my motor. If that turbo boosts too high too soon at a low RPM, it could cause me to bend rods and destroy the lower end of my motor. Now my car is running. You can see that I have a vacuum on that turbo system. The needle is below. When I pump my accelerator, it'll bounce up just a little bit. But because I don't have a real load on it, it won't go that high. I really can't get it to really pressurize the system because there's no real load on it. Now over here, I actually installed another turbo boost gauge. At one point, I was having a little bit of problems with my turbo system and I wasn't sure how much pressure my system was putting out. So I installed this additional gauge. For the first 30 seconds, it reads voltage. Then it switches to the pressure in the turbo system. There, it's a negative 
pressure uh, situation. And when I have a load on it, it'll go into a boost situation. So as you can see, I'm experiencing a boost now, a two PSI boost. Well, now it's idle, so it's low. And I can look at those two gauges at the same time or simultaneously and know how much pressure my turbo system is producing. A few months ago, I was experiencing a little bit of extra power in my turbo system. I didn't really know what it was exactly, but I knew something was wrong. And what had happened was my wastegate actuator developed an internal leak and it was not opening my wastegate causing the uh, turbo to produce the right amount of pressure. So when I realized that was happening, I let off the gas until I got it checked out and fixed. Now, there's two ways to check the wastegate. The proper first way is to remove the line coming off the, the uh, wastegate actuator, take that vacuum hose off, put a air pump on there, disconnect the pin at the wastegate arm so that the wastegate is basically not attached to anything and then pressurize this hole with the pump. When you pressurize it, that arm should come out and then when you quit pumping, it should hold that arm out. What I'm gonna do right here, I'm gonna set my camera down, I'm gonna pull that arm out, I'm gonna put my thumb over this hole so that you can see that this arm is being out. So there's a little flat tab on there. Let me go ahead and pull that actuator out so you can see that the diaphragm in here will hold that out. So I have my thumb over the hole. I pulled the actuator arm out and it's currently holding pressure. When I let go, you'll hear the noise of the air escaping and you'll see that that arm move. That lets you know that the diaphragm is good. So it went back in. So the diaphragm inside this wastegate actuator is functioning properly. Also, when I pull the arm out by hand, if I have my finger over it, it will create a suction on my thumb. So when I let go of my thumb, I can hear it suck off as well. So if you want to check your wastegate actuator because you think that it may be defective, disconnect the pin pull the hose off and either put a air pump on there to pump it out to make sure that arm moves out and holds out or simply put your thumb over the hole, pull the actuator out and make sure that it holds out when you let this go and have your finger over there. Of course, that's not a proper measurement of how much pressure is holding, but if you can pull this out, put your thumb over it and it hold pressure out for five or 10 seconds, you know the diaphragm inside of it is good. Okay, just for an overview, this is a wastegate actuator. The purpose of the wastegate actuator is to help the turbocharger maintain the pressure that you're demanding on it through your drive cycle. And if it's defective, the most common symptom that it's defective is the diaphragm in there blows and you'll be able to produce more uh, boost pressure than normal and you can cause it to spike and damage your motor. So it's real important to know that your wastegate actuator is in good shape and I actually seen people install cheap aftermarket wastegate actuators that failed within a few months and when it failed they actually blew their motor because they were over spiking their uh, boost pressure when, um, when they were accelerating, not realizing that it was happening at too low of an RPM, which actually bent the rods inside their motor and destroyed their motor. So there it was, a car sitting in the junkyard with a blown motor because it had a bad wastegate actuator. Now a good wastegate actuator should last many years and if you can monitor how the power feels or more accurately monitor the boost pressure supplied to your boost gauge, you can avoid damaging your motor with a bad wastegate. If you have any questions, 
go ahead and post them below. Me or someone else will respond to them as soon as possible. If you feel that this information was useful, please like it and share it with your social media friends. You can subscribe to my channel so that you will get notifications of future videos that I post. You can follow me on Twitter, and if you need to contact me directly, please visit my website. And if you have any questions, leave them below, and someone or myself will reply to them. Again, thank you very much for watching.